everybody and welcome to my studio. And what's on my mind at the moment is, what do we do when new things come through and what we think of as our style or our subject matter doesn't seem to be what wants to come out? I think that when new things come, it can feel very raw and exposing. Like, this can't be right. People don't know me for this kind of work. And what can happen is when we get that feeling, we go scurrying back to safety. Oh, so I'll just tidy it up. I'll just change what I'm doing because what I'm doing doesn't feel safe and it's easier and I know what safe feels like that I can do that. Or you make something new and it's ugly because you don't yet know how to do the thing that wants to come out of you. There's a gap between what you want to express and what you're currently capable of. So the work looks ugly. And again, if that happens, we scurry back. Oh, let me go back to doing something that looks nice because I know that's safe. But what I want to say to you is, I think whatever comes out of you is, a, is you. We are all sorts of things and we have all sorts of moods and all sorts of opinions and all sorts of different ways we like to dress or different hobbies we like to do or different people that we like to be with. We are many, many things and everything that wants to come out of you is you. It's just a different part of you. Perhaps it's not a part of you that you've let other people see. Perhaps it's not a part of you that you've even let yourself see. And I think that's what's happening for me currently. And so when you're confronted with it, it feels alien and strange, but it's you. It couldn't come out of you if it wasn't you. Maybe it's not as skillful as it needs to be, and that's happening with me at the moment, but it is you. So I'm gonna just take you on a quick tour of what's happening. And it might help you, if you've ever experienced this, to just be more comfortable with thinking about where it might be coming from for you and whether you can live with it or not and pursue it because if you do I think you get to great places. So I have five little panels hanging on my painting wall at the moment that all relate to each other and actually there's one more if I point the camera down I didn't have enough hooks for that one and these are in various stages from very early to maybe I like this enough to keep it as it is but there are certain things wanting to come out that I've just decided to let out, even though they feel awkward to me. So these shapes, these kind of very rough and organic, rock-like shapes, I keep wanting to make those marks. I keep wanting to make dots. I keep wanting to make stripes. And this is a colour palette I have worked with for the longest time. And yet the colours I'm mixing from those colours are so different. Um, so I'm choosing to make different kinds of colours from the colours that I always use. Why, I don't know. This is just what's coming out. And I believe in letting that come out. These were the first two that happened. Lots of squiggles. You can see layers. I always work in layers. Little bits of collage. Dots, stripes, stripes. Squiggles, this squiggle thing keeps coming up. This Naples yellow, I've never used pure before. I always mix it into other colours, but now it's coming out in my paintings in pure form. Lots of peaches and pinks being mixed from the cad orange light and the lizard and crimson with various degrees of black and white in them, or maybe some blue in a couple of cases to dull them down or to change the hue. But the marks are just so free and I really love that. And then on these two I've just started are uh, built up on a very textured surface. So I layered a lot of collage and I sanded back and I really like the effect that's giving. They perhaps feel a bit too dark compared to the others. But again, the same shapes and marks are coming in and I'm just letting them. But what is all this about? So it's very dark and gloomy here at the moment. It's autumn it's rained for days and days on end we've had gray skies non-stop it's covid getting worse again it's lots of doom and gloom lots of things happening for me personally that are quite challenging just i have just been really working on the way i see things and the thoughts that i have about things and the amount of seriousness with which i take myself and the 
the things I imagine to be true, which I actually don't know are true, all the thoughts I have of the future, the imagined future, which then make me react a certain way when I have no idea what the future is going to bring. And all the thoughts of the past and things going over things, if I had done that, if this had happened instead, which got nowhere because the past isn't even a real thing. It's already gone now. You can't touch the past. You can't change the past. All we ever have is the moment that we're living in. And I've been really working on living in that moment and appreciating that moment. And when these colors started to come into my work and these free marks and this bounciness, I thought, oh, look, that's what that is. That is the light in the darkness. That is the happiness that you can find even when it doesn't seem like you'd be in a situation that would necessarily be happy. That's the joy you can find when it's grey and raining and gloomy. That's the joy you can find when you're locked down because of a pandemic. That is what we can do inside our minds to live in the present moment rather than to always be locked into this darkness that we can create with our own thoughts. For me, these paintings are my way, my reflection of my change in mindset. So that's what I think is happening in these paintings. And there's always a meaning. There's always something behind what comes out of us. Sometimes we can understand it, sometimes we can't. But I think it's important to trust it. I think that is just the most exciting thing because I can look at some of these paintings, I can look at this one, I can say, oh, it's way too pink for some people, it's way too bouncy for some people, it's way too rough for some people, it's way too abstract for some people. I don't care. When I look at that, it makes me happy. When I look at this, it reflects where I am at the moment and it will always cheer me up when I look at that. I don't need know what other people think this will bleed into life because life goes into your art art goes into your life you can't avoid those two things happening so if I can be brave and push through and do these things even though I don't understand them and make cotton candy colors if I even though I've never done that before and use bouncy marks and you know happy free expressive brush strokes I think that comes into my life and I think likewise, if I get strict and constricted and restricted and tense with myself and tell myself off and all of that will come into my life as well. Do leave me a comment and let me know if this resonates with you. If you'd like lots more of my videos, if you'd like to hear from me regularly from my studio, if you'd like to watch me paint, if you'd like to learn from interviews I do with other artists, and learn from monthly masterclasses that I teach, check the link below to join my art tribe, which is a low cost monthly subscription community, artist community, where people from all over the world at all different levels of experience get together to help and support each other and to learn. You can find the link below this video or you can go to my website, louisefletcherart.com and just look at, for the four artists tab at the top of the page and look for Art Tribe. See you soon. Bye.